Welcome to Church of the Chair, where we believe in retail therapy. I'm your host, E, and today we're partaking in consumerism. But first, let me show off my current reads. This one is book four in a series, one of my favorite thriller series ever written, and I am currently reading it to my wife about 20 pages a day. We're on page 80, and that is For You and Only You by Caroline Kepnes. I won't be reading the description of the books that I'm reading because I will be reading those descriptions in the reviews that I will be doing. Next up, for my series Time for a Tome, I'm reading the... This thing's heavy and my camera's glitching out. Anyways, it's The Deluge by Stephen Markley, uh, author of the absolutely fantastic Ohio. My review for that one is on the channel, but I will be here for a while because it is 896 pages. Lastly, last night... Uh, I started uh, Day by Michael Cunningham, the author of The Hours, which I believe was turned into a Nicole Kidman adaptation. I'm not quite sure, but I am enjoying the book, although I am only about 15 pages in. I did get a, an, an ARC from NetGalley and the publisher, and here's the cover. Now, on to the book haul. The first four books that I picked up this past week all come from a thrift store, Oddly enough, named Thrift Store in Montgomery, Alabama. They were a dollar each. Let's jump into those. I have Tanana Reeve Dew's Blood Colony. And I also picked up My Soul to Take. What I didn't know when I picked these up is this is book... Sorry, this is book three and this is book four. But I have ordered book one and two from... Uh, either book outlet or a books they were super cheap like under three dollars each um i have picked those up but i have to wait for them to get here now on to the description this one is the description for blood colony there's a new drug on the street glow its main ingredient is blood the blood of immortals said to heal almost any illness it is distributed by an underground railroad a small but powerful colony of drug peddlers slowly wiping out the AIDS epidemic and other diseases around the world. Meet Fanna Wold, F-A-N-A-W-O-L-D-E, 17 years old, the only immortal born with the living blood. She can read minds and her injuries heal immediately. When her best friend, a mortal, is imprisoned by Fanna's family, Fanna helps her escape and together they run away from Fana's protected home in Washington State to join the Underground Railroad. But Fana has more than her parents to worry about. Glow peddlers are being murdered by a violent hundred-year-old sect with ties to the Vatican. Now when Fana is most vulnerable, she is being hunted to fulfill an ancient blood prophecy that could lead to countless deaths, while her people search for Fana and race to unravel the unknown sect's mysterious origins. Fana must learn to confront the deadly forces, or she and everyone she loves will die. Now on to the description of my soul to take. I gotta make sure I got the, get that right because my soul to keep is the first book in the series. Fana, an immortal with tremendous telepathic abilities, is locked in a battle of wills. Her fiancé is Mitchell. But Johnny Wright, a mortal who is in love with her, believes that if she doesn't stay away from Mitchell, they will become the witnesses to the apocalypse described in the Book of Revelations. Fana and the Life Brothers are rushing to distribute their healing living blood throughout the world, hoping to eliminate most diseases before Fana is bound to marry Mickle. Michelle. Mitchell. <laughs> it's M-I-C-H-E-L. I'm sorry, I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce that one. I've been fluctuating. Anyways, on, on with the description. Still, they cannot help people faster than Mitchell can kill them. Do weaves a tangled web in this novel, including beloved characters from her best-selling Joplin's Ghost in a war of good against evil, making my soul to take a chilling and thrilling experience. Now, I'm not sure if these are vampire novels or not, but I have been toying with a Tanana Reeve Do theorist series, and seeing as Joplin's Ghost is a standalone novel that also ties in with this one, and having read The Between and um, have been picking away at The Good House... I, I feel like I can do a series with her stuff, so definitely let me know if you'd like to see that down there in the comment section. Next up, we have a classic that I've been trying to get my hands on for a while, and that is The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. Not that it's hard to find, but I, per I would 
have preferred this edition of the book because it matches other editions of his books that I own. Also, it's it's a classic by John Steinbeck. I'm, I'm not going to read the description. So moving on. Next up, we have a book and an author I've never heard of, but as soon as I saw the cover, I had to pick it up, and that is The Circus of the Earth and the Air by Brooke Stevens. This book is uh, free on Kindle Unlimited right now, and it's only $2.99 if you don't have Kindle Unlimited. Um, the hardcover is super cheap. Uh, it kind of seems like it had disappeared from publication completely, even though it is up for cheap. So if you guys like the description, certainly go check it out because it sounds amazing to me. Let's get into that. During their summer vacation on an island off the coast of New England, Alex Barton watches his wife Iris swim in the calm blue-green sea. Looking out at the water, staring at the reflection of blue that his wife had become, he thought of how much he loved her and how strange and lucky it was that they were together. Later, beyond the dunes, they come across a circus tent, where, as price of admission, Iris, an actress, volunteers for a disappearing act. After she steps into a box and the box is set on fire, she vanishes. And by the next morning, the circus itself has disappeared without a trace. To find her, Alex sets out on a mesmerizing journey to a fantastical island owned by one of the great circus masters of Europe, where he believes the woman he loves is held hostage. In this existential realm of performers and soldiers, strongmen and contortionists, trapeze artists and clowns, dreams and nightmares, Alex, tortured, tempted, analyzed, sheds his identity and gains a new one, as a tightrope walker whose strength is his vulnerability. The haunting, elusive world of the circus will lead him from Mississippi to New Hampshire to find what may or may not be the truth about his wife and himself. The Circus of the Earth and the Air is a gripping and magical debut in which the circus, primitive, metaphysical, religious, violent, reveals the very essence of performance, of loneliness, and of love. That sounds absolutely amazing. I am all about that. It reminds me a bit of the Pilo Family Circus by Will Elliott. And if it's anything like that, I'm going to love it. And now let's get to the brand new books that I bought with a gift card from my friend Henry. Thanks, Henry. First up, we have a book from an author who I absolutely adore, I absolutely love, um, but I wasn't a huge fan of the first book in the series. I gave it three stars. I had some criticisms, but I definitely wanted to read the follow-up, and that is Don't Fear the Reaper by Stephen Graham Jones. Um, I don't want to read the description of this one because I don't want any spoilers. I trust Jones, but I don't trust the person who wrote the blurb because I don't know them. So I'm going to stay away from the description of this one for reasons I've just stated. Next up, we have an author. This isn't the book I got, but I read this book by Brian Washington. It was a collection of short stories called Lot. Um, I fell in love with this, and I was eagerly awaiting something longer from him. And I finally got it. Memorial by Brian Washington. Washington. Benson and Mike are two young guys who live together in Houston. Mike is a Japanese-American chef at a Mexican restaurant, and Benson's a black daycare teacher, and they've been together for a few years. Good years. But now they're not sure why they're still a couple. There's the sex, sure, and the meals Mike cooks for Benson, and, well, they love each other. But when Mike finds out his estranged father is dying in Osaka, just as his acerbic... acerbic? A-C-E-R-B-I-C. -E Mother, Mitsuko, arrives in Texas for a visit. Mike picks up and flies across the world to say goodbye. In Japan, he undergoes an extraordinary transformation, discovering the truth about his family and his past. Back home, Mitsuko and Benson are stuck living together as unconventional roommates, an absurd domestic situation that leads Benson to a deeper understanding of family and himself. Benson begins to push outward, realizing he might just know what he wants out of life and have the goods to get and have the goods to get it. Sorry, stumbled. Both men will change in ways that will either make them strong together or fracture everything they've ever known. Memorial is a funny and profound story about big first loves, family in all its forms, becoming who you're supposed to be, and the limits of love. This sounds great. I'm looking forward to it. It'll prob I'll probably end up reading it after I get done with The Deluge by Stephen Markley. And finally on the docket, we have an author that every single one of you, every time you hear that I do not 
enjoy fantasy or that I enjoy fantasy from uh, everyone but the typical traditional authors that you see in every single sci-fi and fantasy uh, uh, shelf in a bookstore, uh, everybody brings up N.K. Jemison. I went ahead and I got the fifth season. I'm not a fan of post-apocalyptic fiction. I have done the look inside for this book twice, and it seems like that's what it is. I don't want to read too much of the description. I, I'm not going to read it at all in this video, but I didn't want to read too much of the description because I don't want to know, but people keep telling me to to get into her. So I'm I'm pick I'm going into this one as soon as I get done with Moon Witch Spider King by Marlon James. I also went ahead because this one was on clearance uh, for seven dollars I think six ninety seven at Books a Million. I also picked up The City We Became. Um, once again, because I am looking forward to these, I am not going to be reading the descriptions. Uh, and the other ones were vague enough that I thought like the the Brian Washington book were vague enough that I. I felt that I wouldn't be hurting, you know, my chances by reading them. But with something like this, I don't want to know anything about it. I'm especially particular when it comes to my fantasy, my horror, and my science fiction. But that's all the time I have for you today. If you've read any of these books, uh, you can comment below. But please, no spoilers whatsoever. Don't even give me a hint about what some of these books are about, especially not the ones that uh, I didn't read the description for. Also, if you um, have a book haul yourself that you want to post and go, I love seeing other people's book hauls. So definitely post what you picked up in the past couple weeks, days, whatever, down there in the comments section. But until next time, I'll hail the chair. Bye now.